Hey and welcome back to this new Pizza Dorey tutorial. Today we will create a cinematic scene in Eevee. We will use the ANT landscape plugin, add some materials, create some water and a glowing cube. And finally, we will add some lights and some fog. Let's jump right in. Okay, here we are in a fresh blender scene. Let's delete the cube. And we need today a landscape. If you don't have this enabled here, you can go to edit preferences and search you for landscape and enable the ANT landscape. Let's go back and create a new landscape. Maybe let's zoom a little bit in and we want to bring up here this menu. Let's go into the operator presets and change this one here to Canyon. Okay, this one looks already good, but we want to scale this up and for this, we have to increase here the subdivision. So we're having a little bit more details later. Let's select this both and change this one to 400. Okay, that looks better. Now we can go ahead and increase the size of the X and Y to 150 by 25 and the Z. Let's bring this now to the right position. And uh, let's go with minus 15.2 by 38.6 by minus 1.4. Now let's hop into the shading and add here some textures. Now let's select this one here and press here new. We want to rename this to rocks. Now we want to select the principal BSDF, press control, shift and T. And if you don't get this window, you have to go here again into the preferences and search for Wrangler. Let's press Ctrl Shift T again. Okay, now let's select here the normal, the roughness, the color, the displacement and the ambient occlusion. Okay, as we can see now here in the material preview, it looks <laughs> not like a rock texture. What we have to do now is unwrap the uh, landscape. So let's press tab when everything is selected. Maybe yours is not selected. You only have to press A. And then we have to go here now to UV and unwrap. This may take some time. Keep this in mind. Let's leave now the edit mode by pressing tab. And this looks a little bit more like rocks here. Let's adjust this a little bit more by going here into the mapping now and change the scale in the X and the Y to 2. That looks a little bit better. And now we want to add here the ambient inclusion texture as well. So let's search here for a mix node. Change the float to color and bring this one in here. Let's add now the color from the ambient inclusion to the B channel here. And after that, we can change mix to multiply and increase the factor to one. Okay, the other thing which I want to change is the specular. Let's change this to 0.08. Let's jump over to layout mode. Now it's time to bring in here a second window. So let's do this. And now we can change our camera view here now. Let's select the camera and let's go here with a zero by minus 25 by 2.5. Let's rotate this in the X to 90 by, by zero by zero. We have to adjust here some settings in the camera, but first let me change here the aspect ratio to that's our final output. Let's go here back to the camera and I want to change the viewport display the PESPA 2 to 1. And now we can change the focal length as well. For now we want to use 11 millimeters. As we can see here now the mountain is a little bit closer to the edge. So let's shift the camera to 0.05. Now we have a little bit more room here. Let's go into rendering here and that's our scene. Maybe let's enable here now the EV settings, ambient inclusion, bloom and screen space reflections. Nothing happens here right now. It's important that you enable this one. Maybe let's go here into the screen space reflections, disable half rest trace, increase the trace position and the maximum roughness. And I want to turn down the edge fading. Let's go ahead here with an HDRI. So we're having a little bit more light in our scene. And to do this, I want to use here the Easy HDRI plugin. I will put a link into the description. Uh, you can choose here your favorite folder and then you have to press create world nodes. After that, we will have here our HDRI. Today I want to use the sky is on fire. It's a free HDRI. I will put a link 
in the description as well. So let's select this one and now hop back into shading. Maybe let's render this one here. And I want to go here now into the world settings of uh, our easy HDRI. And I want to rotate this one a little bit. So let's go here with in the Z. So we are having here these clouds and this cool horizon. Maybe let's shift this a little bit in the X value by minus three. And to create a little bit more of a sunset feel, let's turn down here the value of the at node 2.1. Let's jump back here into the layout mode. Now we can add here our next object, which is a cube, mesh and cube. So let's scale this one up here in the X and Y and Z to 10. Yeah, let's add here a modifier, which is a wireframe. Maybe let's go here now into this view. Now we can change here the thickness to 0.07. So it's a little bit thicker now and everything else is okay. Let's hop back into shading and I want to add here a new material. So this one will be the material cube. Now let's create here a glowy material for our cube. I want to use here a Fresnel and pipe this one into a ramp and this into the emission color. Let's increase here the emission strength to 8.8. .8. And I want to change the Fresnel to 5.65. And now we can play here with the colors. I want to go here with a little bit more darkish blue by more brighter blue. <laughs> Something like this. That's all for uh, this material. And now we have to change here the cube. So let's go back into layout mode and now let's change this one here to the Z value of 2.3 and I want to change the rotation to minus 45 by minus 45 by minus 27.2. Uh, the rotation is up to you as always. <laughs> Everything is up to you, so. <laughs> and I want to add here a little bit more reflection into the scene. What we can do easily is add here a new plane. This one here. Let's scale this one by 44 by 44. And I want to set this a little bit down to minus 0.65. So we are having here a kind of a small uh, water stuff going on. And now we have to back into the shading so we can create now this water material. That's really quick material water. Let's turn the base color down to black and I want to bring down the roughness. The specular is okay, but I want to increase the metallic to one. Yeah, and to have a little bit more detail, let's search here for a uh, noise texture. I want to bring this into a bump height and this one here into the normal. Now we can play with uh, the scale. So let's go with 32 and leave everything like it is. But I want to turn down here the strength because that's a little bit too much for me. Let's go with 0.1 and that looks a little bit better here. I think the reflection is okay, but we can improve this. Let's go back to layout mode by adding here a new uh, light probe reflection plane. Let's scale this one up by pressing S now. And I want to scale this maybe to something like 25. When we are going here to the options, let's enable here the show preview plane. And I don't want to use an offset and increase the distance. And to set this one up now, we have to enable here uh, this show overlays. Now we can see here the preview plane. Now let's press G and Z and put this here into the right spot, maybe to something uh, like this. This is okay. Now let's disable here the preview plane and the reflection looks much better than before here. The last thing for this one is now to create here some lights to get a little bit more of realism. And I want to use here our light for, um, yeah, for the sun. Let's turn this light here into an area light and I want to bring this here to a new position. So uh, let's go here and change this one to 10 by 110 by 26.4. So it's a little bit off here now. 
let's rotate this to minus 90 by 0 by 0. So it's shining here in right to the camera. And now we can go ahead and change the color to something orangey. I like to go here with this hex code. Let's increase the power to 150,000. Boom. Now we have to go here into the shape and change this to square. And I want to increase this to 19. As we can see now, our light is reflecting in the water. So we can uh, hide this one by turning down the specular from one to zero. And let's go to shadows and enable contact shadows. That's the light for the scene, but I want to add here a new light because we want to light up this uh, area here around uh, our cube a little bit. Let's go to light and point light and put this one in the Z value to 4.4 .4 so that this one is right in the middle of our cube. We want to change this now to something bluish and increase this one to 10,000. That looks a little bit better here now. And same thing again, we can see that the light is reflecting in the water. And let's turn uh, this one down now. Yeah, and I want to, don't want to light up the whole scene. So let's go to custom distance and turn this a little bit down to 32. Okay, and the last thing which we need now is another cube. Let's bring up the dimension to 50 and hop over to shading, add a new material, delete this one and search for volumetric scatter. Put this one here into the volume. And now we want to change this one, this color here to something grayish. Turn down the density to 0.05. And I like to have... <laughs> And yeah, I want to leave the anisotropy, but as you can see here now, we can see our point light, uh, which looks not cool. So what we can do now is select our point light again and increase the radius to 3.6. And now the spot is gone. Yeah, and to bring in a little bit more contrast, we can go here now to the render settings, color management, scroll down and change the look a little bit to something which you like. I like to use here for me the medium high contrast. And as I said, as we changed here the camera focal length, we want to animate this one today. So let's make here our first keyframe in the Y value. So let's press this little button here and let's minus 20, press this point here again. Now we are having a little animation, but I want to change here now the focal length as well. So let's press here on the focal length, this button here again. Maybe let's enable this here and go to 250. And we want to change this down to nine and press this button again. Let's press A to select every points here and right click interpolation mode and linear. That was this tutorial and if you like my stuff, check out and subscribe to my channel. If you want to support me, check out my Comrade or Blender Market page. See you there and bye.